Hi, this is Sunil Bharti and today we have with us once again Kerry Stewart, Senior Director of Strategic Programs at Linux Foundation. The NCC group recently evaluated you know, Zephyr security. Uh, can you talk about you know, what kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, what was the outcome of that evaluation and, uh, and you know, what's going on in the whole community uh, based on that? Sure, happy to. Um, we're very thankful for the NCC group for the work that they did. Um, and helping us to get Zephyr um, hardened further. Um, in some senses, it uh, when it first hit us, it was sort of like, okay, they're taking us seriously now. Awesome. <laughs> Be and they, the reason they're doing it is because their customers are asking for it. You know, the, they've got you know people who are very interested in Zephyr, and so they decided to invest the research, the time doing the research, to see what they could find. And the fact that we're good enough to critique now is um, a, a nice positive for the project, no question. Um, what it did, up till this point, we had been getting some, you know, vulnerabilities that researchers had noticed in certain areas and had they told us about, we'd issued CVEs. So we had a process down, but suddenly being hit with the whole bulk of those like that, it was like, okay, time to up our game, guys. And uh, so what we've done is we really didn't, we found out we didn't have a good way of letting people who have products with Zephyr based on them know about our vulnerabilities. And, uh, what we wanted to be able to do is make it clear um, that if they, people have products and they have them out in the market and that they want to know if, if there's a vulnerability, we we just added a new web page so they know how to register and they can let us know to contact them. The, the, the challenge of Embedded is you don't quite know where the software is. We've got a lot of people downloading Zephyr. We've got a lot of people using Zephyr. We're seeing you know people upstreaming things all the time, but we don't know where the products are. Um, you know, It's all word of mouth to a large extent, there's no tracers or anything else. You don't want to do that in an embedded space on IoT. Battery life is important. And so uh, it's pretty key for um, figuring out how do we let people who want to be notified know. And uh, we'd, we'd registered as a CNA um, you know, with MITRE several years ago now, and we've been, you know, we can assign CVE numbers in the project. But uh, what we didn't have was a good way of reaching out to people beyond our membership under embargo so that we can let, give them time to you know, remediate any issues that we're fixing. So we've changing um, our policies. It's gone from a 60-day embargo window to a 90-day embargo window. The first 30 days, we're working internally to get the team um, to you know, fix the issues. And then we've got a 60-day window for our people who do products to basically remediate in the field if necessary. So, you know, joining, you know, getting ourselves um, useful for product makers was one of the big focus this year. Since uh, Zephyr's LTS release was uh, made last year, uh, can you talk about, you know, uh, the, the, the new releases, especially from the, from the security perspective, uh, because I think the latest version is what, 2.3.0? Yeah, 2.3.0, and then we also have 1.14.2. 1.14 is our LTS, our LTS 1, as we say. And we put an update out to it with the security fixes. And, you know, an, a long-term stable like the Linux kernel does is has security fixes and bug fixes backported into it so that people can build products on it and keep it active over time without as much change in the interfaces and everything else that we're doing in the mainline development tree. Um, and what we've just done with the 2.3. And so 2.3 has a lot of new features in it and we've got all these vulnerabilities remediated and we um, and there's a really good blog post I'll highly recommend you to take and look at to find the details. Carl was the release manager this year and he did an awesome job uh, for this release of documenting you know some of the new features and there's a lot more coming up down the road. So the community right now is working, we've adopted a new set of coding guidelines for the project, um, and we will be working on that so we can get ourselves ready for going after safety certifications next year. So there's a lot of motion, <laughs> there's a lot of code in motion right now, but there's a lot of new features being added every day. It's great. Uh, we talked about the, the, the tech, tech part of Zephyr. I, I also talk a bit about the community side of it. You know, can you talk about how the community is growing uh, new use cases? We've just added two new members into Zephyr. Um, we've got Teenage Engineering um, has just joined us and Laird Connectivity has just joined us. And um, it's really you know, sort of cool to start seeing these products coming out um, from these um, 
you know, there's some rather interesting technologies and products that are showing up. And so I'm really looking forward to being able to have blog posts about them. Um, one of them I just learned about earlier this week from um, Laird uh, Connectivity is a, uh, basically a device, small device running Zephyr that you can use for basically monitoring distance without recording other information. So in your know, days of COVID, um, we need to, you know, we need to start figuring out technology assists to help us, um, you know, keep the risk down. And so Laird Connectivity has a new device. So you should be seeing a, a blog post about that or at least some links um, very shortly, I hope. And uh, there's also two other devices that are with Zephyr that are out there. So um, Intellinium has a uh, device that you basically put on your shoe for in the factories that's doing um, the distancing. And then the other one that's there is uh, the distancer from Vitech. So we're seeing, you know, a lot of innovation happening very quickly in Zephyr. And that's really Zephyr's strength is it's got a very solid code base and lets people add their innovation on top. Yeah, I mean, I think because of COVID-19, a lot of, you know, a uh, lot of, uh, how do I say it? It is creating new set of challenges. And then suddenly we are trying to solve those problems using it. But uh, what is interesting is that once we are through when I have no idea, uh, the cases are going up and the governments are like trying to say that nothing is happening. But whenever, uh, I have no idea, but whenever we are through it, uh, it's going to like a, a, lot, a lot of solutions that come out at this time are going to change the way we build things around it because suddenly we are kind of, we have a lot of limitation, we have a lot of restrictions, we have to do away with whatever we have, resources we have. And also because of remote working, you cannot go to your data center, you cannot go to a factory, you know, even if you, who the people are. So it's going to change a lot of things. So what do you think will the the, the role, you know, Zephyr based or other RTS, you know, not specific Zephyr, how much? What role is going to be? I you know the the embedded or or edge computing is going to play in the way we build uh, our infrastructure and, and use these technologies. Well, I think they offer interesting. Um, they offer interesting opportunities. Some of the technologies that are sort of being looked at for monitoring, for instance, um, are have. You know, we have to distance monitoring, contact tracing, things like that. We can either do it very manually or we can start to take advantage of the technology infrastructures to do so. Um, but, you know, people may not want to have a device effectively monitoring them all the time um, and every signal around them. They may just want to know exactly position wise where they are. So that's potentially some, you know, some degree of control over what's being sent into the track, tracing and tracking. Um, that's one of those, you know, th these sorts of technologies, I think, will be helping us um, mm -hmm. improve things over time. I think they offer, there's a lot of knowledge that we're getting out of these and ways we can optimize information. Um, and the RTOSs and the sensors are, you know, you know, discrete functionality and are improving, you know, how do we look at things. Those are sort of what's immediately on the top of my mind right now. I think if I think a little bit longer, I'll come up with some, a lot of other things, but that's a good question. Um, we really, um, you know, our video conferencing technologies right now are going to improve by the end of the year. There's no question of it. Uh, one of the things that was sort of kind of fun is um, I was, May and I were chatting with a, a company that's going to be having a virtual conference, virtual trade show floor, and how we're going to set up virtual booths and talking about Zephyr and then you know, how do we start getting these types of interactions happening that we used to have in person, but at least have, do it in a more safe way until we get better solutions out there for the virus. There are so many innovative people in the community or I mean, not in, this, in, 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 the, in the world that they will be uh, doing a lot of things. Now, there are a lot of people who are Zephyr member, but there are also a lot, they're using the project, but you're not even aware of them. So, so how, how yeah, so, while they can freely use the project, it's fine. But when it comes to security, how do you ensure that irrespective of if somebody is a member or interacting uh, with you or not, to make sure that whatever whatever devices they are running on Zephyr are still secure? We've got a lot of testing. We do a lot of testing with Zephyr. There's a tremendous amount of test infrastructure. There's a, you know the whole regression infrastructure. We work to various thresholds of quality levels. Um, and we've got a lot of uh, expertise and have publicly documented all of our best practices. 
Um, so we try, we, you know, we're confident enough and we want to be, we want to be critiqued. Okay. If we're wrong, tell us, um, you know, the, the safe security team is, you know, top notch group of people. They're so, you know, I'm really so proud to be able to work with them. They do a really good job of, um, you know, caring about the issues as well as finding them, debugging them and making sure anything that comes up gets solved. So, you know, in that sense, um, there's a lot of really great people working on Zephyr. Um, and it makes it a really fun community to work with, no question. In fact, it's growing fast, actually. Um, we're now over 700 um, contributors into the re into the project um, based on the stats from last week, and it's like, wow. <laughs> it, it's, it's moving, and people are finding it useful for what they want to do, um, and they care about security, and they know we care about security, and... Um, if they have products and they don't want to be visible any other way, then just please register on the, the page that lets us know about them and that they've got a public product out there that it uses using Zephyr. And we'll cross-check with them and then we'll add them to the list so they can be notified about the embargoes. Kate, thank you so much for taking your time out and talking to me today about these projects.